How is it going guys? Slippery Jim here. Welcome back to Ark Survival Ascended on the island. And in the last episode, after venturing into the oceans here, I managed to tame three high level megalodons and uh, get them back to base, which is pretty awesome. So I do want to start uh, another breeding program with the megalodons this time so that we can try to get some uh, mutations on them for health and melee damage and uh, maybe we'll end up with a massive meg army i think that would pretty cool to be basically be able to go around the oceans with a posse of megs <laughs> just destroy everything <laughs> but um, i'll take you guys down and uh, i haven't actually ridden them yet but i did check my uh, vault full of saddles and i've actually got two uh, actually, I've got four saddles for Megs. Um, one of them is even an Ascended saddle. But I grabbed these couple of uh, lower level saddles here and uh, we'll, we'll give them a try out. But um, yeah, I'll show you guys what I did between episodes here. So uh, I did want to expand the area that I've got for uh, Aquatic Tame. So we just had our little frog spawning um, hut down here on the beach but uh, what I've done is I've expanded this out <laughs> so I've got quite a large area here now which is really awesome because if we get some of the larger teams eventually and stuff like that we are gonna need the space I think so yeah I <laughs> essentially I've fenced off this entire area here uh, I built a couple of these spotlight things as well to light up inside of the um, the big pool that we've got here um, put a, a trough in the middle there and I've got two of our megs over here so I already uh, bred them once and I got super lucky because the first baby shark that I got here um, is combining the best stats from these two sharks already so that worked out quite nicely for us. <laughs> when you start breeding the mutations, like the first step is really to combine all the regular um, stats of your breeding, um, your initial breeding um, dinos, so you, so that the, the offspring have all the best stats from the parents. So we've actually got three sharks to, to choose from here. Um, only one female. So the female had the best stat for uh, stamina and then this male over here was the lower level male and this one here gotta remember to uh, to breathe <laughs> but this one had the um, much higher health than the other two and also had the highest weight stat so uh, basically those those uh, stats are now transferred over and combined into this baby here which is awesome and uh, once this one grows up, what we're going to do is we're going to breed this one with our um, max level Meg here. And this one is um, going to give us our highest melee, uh, also our, our highest food stat. Not that that's super important, but let's, uh, let's throw this guy out here. <laughs> He's got the green stripes going on. And, um, yeah, we might as well put a saddle on this guy and we'll take him for a bit of a spin. Try him out. But, yeah. <laughs> these, uh, these guys are pretty, uh, pretty awesome. Um, they're not as fast as a dolphin, obviously, but, I mean, come on. <laughs> it's a, it's a megalodon, right? So, yeah, it's, it's pretty awesome. Um, pretty fast. Feels pretty fast, anyway. So, down here, I've got a couple of, um, dino gates we've got the smaller one over there we can use for stuff like if we're riding you know one of our frogs or if we're riding a dolphin or something like that and uh, then we've got the two behemoth gates here that we can go through as well for uh, larger teams uh, like these megs I don't think this fella would fit through this gate it might but then again, no, I don't think it would. <laughs> now I look at it, it's definitely... Oh, I don't have uh, the... Tr I, sh I should have brought my scuba gear. I completely, completely forgot that that 
would be important. But <laughs> let's just try out the basics here. So obviously we've got the chomp here. Left click. Does a fair bit of damage because this guy has really high melee as well. Let's see if there is a right click attack here. Looks like we get some bleed damage happening. Right click doesn't seem to do anything. Um, and then the C button also does nothing. And the space bar does nothing. So I guess it's just all about that left click. Simple. <laughs> Simple. Effective. But I think, um, yeah, look at that. We're definitely getting a bleed. Definitely getting a bleed, which is awesome. I think this is the first dino, apart from my Allosaurus, which uh, has a bleed ability uh, with its attack. Although with the Allosaurus, you need to be um, in a pack to get that bleed. So I've only got one Allosaurus, which means I don't really get that. But uh, anyway, yeah, so this is, uh, this is what the... Uh, the water pen looks like from the outside. I put I put some um, little bit of uh, uh, what's it called um, greenhouse glass in, just um, so you can see through. You know, see what's on the other side <laughs> before you go out there. Just close that up there. But um, there's no real like actual floor down here it's just like the seabed so it's going to be a little bit um a little bit problematic with with um breeding these 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 water dinos in here because um when you have to take care of the unwanted offspring um a lot of them will just run all over the place like swim all over the place in this case uh they can be hard to to chase down <laughs> that's a big part of the the breeding process sadly but um yeah anyway we'll figure it out um one thing actually that i was looking at let's just leave this guy right here for now so one thing i found with the megs as well they don't lay eggs um sharks generally do lay eggs in real life I i'm not a shark expert or anything but maybe some of them have live births i'm not too sure how it works but in this this game they have um like a gestation period and a live birth of their offspring which also makes it a little bit more annoying to breed these because um you're not you know you're not having the eggs um yeah but we'll figure it out and there might be some tools we can use to help us as well um actually i might just set him to be make sure he's on passive so he doesn't get involved in too many uh, fights. Let's just change this to passive. He's not following me, which is good. All right, very good, very good. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. I brought my Overraptor down here thinking I was gonna get shark eggs, but turned out to not be a thing. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy with how this area turned out. I, I think it's pretty cool. Hopefully it's, um, it's big enough and everything. But, uh, let's just stick these in here. Um, actually, I'll put the saddle in here as well. Um, now there's a couple of things that I want to craft that uh, could potentially help with breeding in general as well, but also specifically with how we um, deal with the uh, live birth situation. And hopefully I have enough resources to be able to craft in particular two items that we need. One is going to be super useful going forward and the other one's going to be specifically handy for the um, live birth situation so yeah if we look into our engrams here under the bob's tall tales there's actually a couple of things one that is probably the most exciting and the most useful thing for breeding um, that's been released recently with bob's tall tales 2 is uh called the gene scanner and this thing requires 10 black pearls uh, a bunch of other stuff there as well to craft 
But I think we do have the black pearls that we need for this. And let's just get this crafted up here. Gene Scanner. Beautiful. So what this gene scanner does, um, from my research that I've done on this thing, is it will actually enable you to see uh, the specific gene traits. And I'm not talking about mutations. I'm talking about a completely new mechanic that's been introduced and added to, to dinos um, when this um, latest map came out, Aberration, which came out recently. Uh, and these are very exciting new abilities that the dinos can have, <laughs> including things like Vampiric, which allow the dino to restore health from uh, eating, I believe, or from, yeah, from eating and stuff like that. But there's a whole bunch, like there's dozens of different things that they, traits that they can have. But the problem is that it's only on wild dinos that you get these traits. Uh, what you have to do is find the trait you want, extract it with this thing, and then you can implant it into a baby dinosaur, uh, not an adult. Um, it has to be a baby dino. And the only dinos that are going to have these uh, these traits are dinos that um, I've tamed since the update. If that makes sense. So. If we look at Sarah here that we tamed since the update, this one has carcass bearing. And uh, carcass bearing, if we press the H button, it tells us what that means. It basically has reduced weight um, for things like chitin, hide, wool, etc. So pretty cool. Um, but there's a whole bunch of different things. Uh, I don't know if we've got any other new recent teams. Let's, uh, let's take a look here. So, um, we have Joe, who has mutable food, and, um, wrong button, <laughs> mutable food, uh, means the creature's offspring have 1.5% chance to mutate, and its mutations have an extra chance to apply to its food stat. So that one's very, very useless, but <laughs> it's just an example. Now, what's interesting about this trait is you can see it's... You can see um, here, it's got a 2 at the start, right? In brackets, 2, mutable food. So that means it's a level 2 trait, um, which is more powerful than level 1. And level 3 is the most powerful, but the rarest to find as well. Uh, let's just see what our Stego has over here. So this is our baby that's grown up now. Um, and this one has food frail, level 1. Uh, so, okay, so that's, that's the food trade inheritance again. Um, we also have our other stego. Let's take a look at that one. Where is it? Steg. This is our parent of the baby that we tamed. Let's throw you out there. And uh, let's see what he has going on. Plant berry. So reduces the weight of the following resources by 10%. Thatch wood fiber berries. That's actually pretty cool. And that's only level one, mind you. But yeah, if we were to go out in the wild and like say we wanted to get some traits for our berries. Um... You have to find the same type of dino, that's the problem, but hopefully I don't get murdered out here because I don't have any weapons on me, this might be a bad idea. But yeah, if we were to go down to the river here and we found a, a barry um, that had a trait that we wanted, what we could do is we could extract the trait with this thing and then we could um, breed a new barry. And... Um, we would be able to implant that trait that we extracted into the new berry, which um, which is pretty cool. Oh, look at that. Interesting. 
So, yeah, I think this also tells you the level of the dino, sort of like the spyglass. It's a shame it doesn't tell you their stats as well. That would have been very OP. Um, yeah, it tells you the level and the sex of the dino. I don't know what that iguanodon's doing. <laughs> but yeah, um, I haven't checked out the traits on our megalodons yet so we'll go down and check those out so this one has exotic bearing that's interesting <laughs> so it can carry things like black pearls melee ro robust but yeah there's dozens of different traits so this this little tool is going to be extremely handy we're trying to get some really OP, even more OP dinos than we've already got. Um, now there is one other thing that I want to craft up before we go down um, to the Megs again and check out what traits they've got going on. Um, and that is uh, a machine called the Gene Storage Structure. And uh, it's a little bit expensive to craft, but at least it doesn't require black pearls. Uh, it does require the gene scanner, which we've already taken. Um, and this, uh, as it says, a specialized storage container for traits harvested from creatures. Requires a gene scanner and power to access the stored traits. Can only be crafted at the fabricator. So what this does is it allows you to, once you've extracted the traits that you want, you can store them for later inside of this thing. I'm not sure how many you can store inside this to begin with. Um, like it says right now zero traits, but yeah, I think it can store a limited number, but we'll try that out. Um, and actually there's another thing too um, that I was thinking of uh, rather than the gene storage right now depending on our resources we do want to craft this thing but it's called the embryo inc incubator so let's unlock that engram and um, this is also pretty expensive it requires 850 um, metal ingots um, etc uh, 350 crystal <laughs> So yeah, this is quite expensive, um, but this allows you to basically extract the embryos from the parent and then store them in the incubator so that they gestate inside of the incubator. Um, and then they'll be stored in there. They don't, they won't get, um, the babies won't get born straight away from this thing. They'll just be sitting there um, and you can take them out and birth them if you like. Um... I'm assuming, I think you birth them straight out the machine. I don't think you pick them up like an egg and throw out the egg. But we'll, we'll test this out. So I definitely want to craft this. Um, so let's do that. Get that happening. I don't know if we'll have enough resources to craft the gene storage thing yet. So it looks like we need crystal... A lot of metal ingots, polymer, yeah. I could probably scrape together, together most of that, that stuff. Um, like, I've obviously got enough cementing slash acatina paste here. But crystal and other stuff, I'd have to go out to farm that. But we'll probably end up getting that pretty soon because um, it, it is pretty useful. Um, let's have a look here. So... Polymer 220, that's something we don't have enough of. Um, we can craft that with obsidian. Let's grab some obs obsidian out of here. We might as well craft the little bit up that we've got. And I also have the. Um, organic polymer that I could get from our soap bars, but um, I don't know how much soap have we got here. 88. That's like 88 polymer basically once I um, grind that up. Uh, 
Um, polymer, crystal, we would need another 350-ish. Yeah, we're a little, a little bit light on the crystal. But I think I've probably got enough metal there. But yeah, I'm not super worried about that right now because I'm only really going to need that thing um, when I've got a lot of traits to store. But uh, anyway, let's actually take a flyer. I'll take um, Alice here. Give you guys an aerial view of the uh, the water pen <laughs> so when we like the hexagonal we'll look again it's just easier than trying to do a circle looks pretty good I think we've got a combination of shallow and deep water there as well I think most creatures will probably end up needing to be in the deeper water Okay, let's see what traits we've got going on with these, um, these megs. So this one has Cowardly. <laughs> That's not a good start. When this creature receives damage from a non-allied target, it gains a 2.5% move speed. Oh, that's not, not as bad as it seems. A little bit of movement speed buff there. That's pretty cool. This one has Cold. Which is creatures rider gains 40 hypothermic insulation. Creature and its rider reducing coming damage from heat based attacks by 5%. <laughs> okay. Uh, so if you were fighting a dragon or something. <laughs> I don't know. Um, this one here excitable. Hitting an enemy with this creature's basic attack reduces the cooldown of its other abilities by 0.25 seconds. Trouble is, it doesn't have any other abilities, as far as I know. That's very odd that they've put that on Megs. Um, and unfortunately, bread dinos do not have any traits on them. Um, I mean, it would have been pretty OP if they did. But... Yeah, apart from that one, like, this trait seems pretty good. Let's see if we can extract... How do we actually extract this stuff? How do I extract it? Oh, there we go. Gene trait options. So this is our trait. Remote target. Gene scanner. Can we just drag this, or...? Transfer, yes. Beautiful. So we now have one trait stored in this thing. Hopefully we can store more than one trait at a time in this. Uh, what was this one again? Insulation. That's a little handy one. I don't know if it would be super important to have, but... Except, okay, now we have two in here. That's pretty cool. Oh, it holds ten. All right. <laughs> Probably should read the UI. Cool. Very cool. So they lose the trait, and then you have it in here, and you can um, add it to babies. Uh, to like a single baby anyway Which is pretty pretty awesome now. This also has a secondary use which is to uh, be able to remove the embryo and um, Then you can store the embryo in the embryo incubator now <clears throat> I'm not sure the best way to use this thing, but I was thinking uh, c because of the issue that I'm gonna have um, with um, 
Move you out of here. Flipper. You can sit over here somewhere. Um, because of the issue that I'm going to have with the little baby sharks uh, that I want to uh, delete swimming around all over the place if they're outside um, and getting lost in little nooks and crannies and then growing up and becoming a nuisance, uh, what I'd like to do is probably uh, remove the embryos and then um, hatch them in this little pool here because the babies should fit in here even if the adults don't and then they're just going to be contained a little bit easier for me. Any that I end up wanting to keep, I'm going to be able to cryo and throw or just get to follow me out the door into the larger um, area. But I'm not sure exactly how this hatches them. So that's something we are going to have to figure out, I guess. Um, because what concerns me is the flooring here. There's... There's a little hollow space underneath here, um, and I don't want them ending up getting spawned underneath the floor if I can help it. So that's that's something I'm a little concerned with. But for now, um, for now we'll just put this. We'll put this. Uh, Let's see, in the middle, I guess. And this should get power. Let's have a look at this thing. So it has 10 slots. Um, so the next, next thing that I'm going to want to do in terms of the actual breeding process is uh, once this female, which has the combined stats of these two megs, once this uh, female grows to full maturity, um, I'm going to breed her with our max level meg over here. Um, and then I'm going to try to get a baby that has the uh, max stats combined from these two. <laughs> so especially important being the melee damage on this one. Um, and then we'll be able to get our base breeders going and start on mutations. But um, what I'll do is I'll wait until this one grows um, to maturity and then we'll try out um, the breeding process and um, figure out how this embryo storage thing works. <laughs> so that's going to be our next step here um so yeah it'll probably take um i don't know an hour or so for for our baby meg grows to maturity for us to be able to start the next stage of breeding well quite a bit of time has passed guys so i'm sure that our baby shark will now be fully grown to maturity so we're going to head back down to the water pen in a moment and uh, play around a bit with embryos. Uh, yeah, sounds a little bit weird, but <laughs> hopefully it's going to make breeding easier for us. Now, uh, while I was waiting for um, the shark to grow to maturity, uh, what I did is head over to the volcano and do a bit of farming. So we also have enough materials now to craft up the gene uh, storage facility. So let's get that happening. And this does require quite a lot of metal, but most of this stuff is pretty easy to get hold of there. So we'll grab that out of there. And uh, we might actually put this downstairs over here, I think. Uh, let's just see. Can we rotate this thing? Let's see. We'll just put it, uh, yeah, we'll just put it there, why not? Cool. Man, this thing looks pretty awesome. It's got, like, dials and things going on back here. Little viewing thingy. 
<laughs> Equip a gene scanner to access stored traits. Now, the one thing I'm wondering about is how many traits can this thing hold? So we know the, that the gene scanner holds 10. Uh, let's have a look here. Okay, it looks like it holds 200, which is pretty cool. So we should just be able to uh, put those into the... Um, the gene storage there for us and then we can pull those out later when we want to apply those to a baby dino with the uh with the gene scanner pretty cool all right i don't know what this inventory here is for but anyway groovy <laughs> so yeah the other thing that the uh, gene scanner can do apart from scanning genes is uh it can harvest embryos uh, so we're gonna go try that out see if we can figure out how this works down here with our uh, with our megs so let's see I've um I've got it over here ready to go now I did notice that it says here embryos that normally must be birthed underwater require the incubator to be underwater so uh Hopefully it's far enough underwater that it's gonna it's gonna work. We'll, we'll soon find out. But uh, let's head over to um, our sharks over here. And uh, this was our baby. It's now fully grown. Um, female with high with the, the health, weight, and stamina stats. Uh, and we want to breed her with our max level uh, male here. Now, what we're trying to get um, from the from the male, I believe that this fella here has the high melee damage, high food stat, um, and I think those are the only two stats we need. From this fella here so uh, we got very very lucky with the very first baby getting the high stats from the other female uh, from the other male I should say but we're about to find out if we're gonna get lucky again here so what I'm gonna do is uh, set them both to mating and get that happening so she should start mating there and I'll just make sure that these are not breeding. I think I left this one on. Let's disable mating on that one as well. And it will take a little while until it's um it's pregnant. So we'll have to wait for that to do its thing. Um hopefully these are these guys are not gonna eat too much food because I did set up another trough underwater here with um with fish and stuff like that in it so let's just check the food levels over here I think it's still pretty good Okay, how are we doing over here? Let's have a look. Getting there. Look at the, those uh, cold, dead eyes. <laughs> Just the pure black eyes are kind of creepy. Alright, once we um once we get our female pregnant here, what we're gonna do is use the uh, gene scanner to extract the embryo. Now the main reason I wanna do this is I, I wanna birth the baby sharks over in my frog hut so that we can have a more controlled approach to uh to to uh, sorting through them and uh, deleting them and stuff like that. Okay, how are you doing now?
Okay, so you can see she's actually gestating right now. And interestingly, it shows us some of the stats of the baby as well. But just so we can test this, let's um, extract the embryo. <laughs> Otherwise, it would have popped out pretty quickly. But that is interesting that you can see the stats just before... It, it's born. That's kind of handy, actually. Um, they're not really the kind of stats that are going to be helpful to me, however, because what I would be looking for is the specific numbers here, rather than the amount of points into each area. Um, or the, um, the level is kind of important too once you're breeding for mutations. But yeah, this is our embryo here. Looks pretty weird. Looks pretty weird. Uh, and I guess we just put it in here. Like that. And it's got about a seven day spoil timer on it, which is pretty decent. Um, so we have the option to destroy the embryo or to hatch the embryo. Um, so I guess the main thing I want to test here, well, to begin with, is whether it's going to. Um, is hatch even the right word for an embryo? <laughs> I don't know if that's the right word actually, but it does say hatch. But yeah. I want to make sure that they're not going to um, pop the baby out under the floor or something like that, which which is just going to get annoying. But we'll see how we go here. Let's uh, let's try this out. So do we have to click on that hatch embryo. There we go. Okay, it popped out on the floor. That's perfect. And this is a 235. So we'll claim so we can check the stats here initially. So we've got uh, obviously the high health. We've got the high stamina. Uh, we've got 13, 339. That's actually uh, higher food than I was expecting. Kind of interesting. I was expecting 3, 280. Uh, sorry, 13, 280 to be our max food. But that's, that's a good thing. We've got the weight, 515. And we've got melee damage, 337. Now, unfortunately, this is one of the most important stats... And we did not get the uh, father's stats coming across of 369 melee. Um, so, yeah, that basically means that this baby is no bueno. <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to deal with the baby here. And I'm probably going to use my Barry for this just so we can um, level it up. But we have to unclaim it first. Hopefully the machine doesn't take damage when we're doing this. There we go. Rest in peace. <laughs> well, guys, I've been making some progress on breeding my Megalodon army here. So I currently have five breeding females and one, one male uh, set up behind me here. Uh, I'm probably going to go for ten... Uh, breeding females with these guys because of the fact that I can't just um, set them to lay eggs and have an oviraptor collect the eggs um, passively. Uh, it's going to be a much slower um, process <laughs> to breed mutations. But one thing uh, I've noticed with this, um, this machine, the embryo in incubator, is that these little ball or cylinder looking things in this uh, in this giant cog here, uh, you can actually um, check out which embryo is stored in each one of these. So uh, as you can see, uh, it does hold, uh, I believe it's 10, 10 at a time. Uh, and they're each assigned a slot, so slot one, slot two, etc. cetera. And uh, you can actually see exactly what stats, um, just what stat distribution the embryo has in in each slot plus you can see the mutations and this is before you actually birth them so uh, this is actually kind of handy because what it means is I can look and check for uh, any mutations and I can also see which um, stat the mutation is in uh, for the embryos um, prior to birthing them and if none of them have the uh, the mutation that I need. I don't actually have to birth them, and then um, you know take care of them, uh, the unwanted uh, babies. But um, which is uh, actually a big part of the process. Um, 
But uh, also, one thing to mention here, I do have uh, five uh, base females here uh, that we're going to be able to birth and um, raise to maturity. And then we'll have all ten ready to go there to, to start getting mutations. Um, but I, I did get lucky here. And one of these, if I see if I can find it, um, might be one of these ones down here, actually. Trying not to drown. <laughs> But uh, let's see here. I'm looking for one. Yeah, this one right here. This is uh, this is actually um, got a mutation on it, and um, I think this is a health mutation. So you can see it's got 47 points in health, and the other base embryos here have uh, 45 points in health. Um, so every mutation they get two. Two, two points in a, in a random stat. So yeah, that ba basically means we've already got our very first uh, mutation that is going to start our health mutation line uh, in this, um, this one down here when we birth that. And this is a male as well, which is perfect. It makes it easier for us to breed that with our with our females. So yeah, basically what I'm going to be doing, guys, is I am going to be um, working further on the mutation process. And I'm going to be trying to uh, get those health and mu melee mutations going. I'm not sure how far down the um, the rabbit hole I'm going to go with this because it's very time consuming. But I would like to have a pretty powerful megalodon army for exploring the the seas and uh, the underwater caves and stuff like that. I think that would be pretty awesome. So we're going to get back to it, and we might take a break at some point and go. Um, and um, do some uh, some exploring, but we'll see what happens. Okay, we're looking for melee mutations. I need 62 points into melee. Oh, this one here has it. Beautiful. Fantastic. I have to be careful it's the right level and everything and, and doesn't have any uh, different additional mutations, but let's just get rid of these uh, embryos here. And, uh, yeah, we're getting there, guys. We've got, um, quite a few Malay mutations. And then I'm thinking of starting on health, um, mutations as well. I'd like to go to 20 in each, but I don't know if my patience is going to last that long. We'll see what happens. But anyway, let's take this, uh, next level mutation to the, um, the machine. And um, we will finish the gestation on this one. Um, it'll take uh, take a little while, and then we should be able to birth this. Uh, where is it? This one here. So as you can see, the embryo is level 255, so that's perfect. And we can see the number of mutations on it as well, which is great. So uh, we'll just wait for that to finish gestating. I thought I'd show you guys a bit of this process because it is probably the most lengthy, time-consuming um, part of ARC that I've found so far. <laughs> but I, I really enjoy doing it as long as I have the time. Um, I think the benefits are really good as well to get those uh, super high stats on some of these creatures. And I just love the idea of having a megalodon army that I can um, take into the seas with me. Okay, it's nearly finished. Let's just hatch this out. So they now have a chance to um, birth twins, and also the twins can be different sexes, which is a um, fairly new update, I believe. Uh, but yeah, this one's looking pretty good. So we just want to check it's got the right number of mutations. So this is... Um, the seventh mutation into melee damage, which is awesome. I'll just uh, name it so that I can remember. It is seven melee. And uh, yeah, it is um, going to go basically straight out into the middle to breed with the, uh, the females because we got lucky and got a male there. Um, if it is a female... It's not really that much of a big, big drama. All I do is breed it with my original base um, male. And usually it doesn't take that long to get a, um, a male version um, with 
all of the uh, correct stats and mutations. But it's just an extra little step in the process if that happens. It's always good to skip that though and just go straight to a male so that we can uh, breed up. But we, we will have to wait for it to um, grow to maturity as well. So uh, let's just uh, take your food out. We'll move you out of the, uh, the circle. <laughs> uh, and put you over here. And you will become a source of raw fish meat in the future. <laughs> uh, they do go through quite a lot of uh, fish meat in the troughs. Um, all of these, all these uh, megs that we've got in the pool at the moment. Okay, I'm going to continue the process for a while and then we might switch it up and go do a little bit of exploring. Well, guys, I think it's time to take a break from the uh, breeding and mutating down here in the water pen. We're at 11 uh, melee mutations on our megs at the moment. I haven't started on the health mutations yet, but uh, we're slowly getting there. We're slowly getting there. But what I think we'll do now is uh, I want to try to go into the snow and there's a dino that I really want to tame up uh, for a couple of reasons and that is the Uturanus. Uh, I've seen a few out there but most of them have been relatively low level so hopefully uh, we can look at finding a, uh, a high level one. I've got all my snow gear ready to go here as well um, but we are going to need some more powerful tranks and stuff like that. Um, yeah so let's head on up to uh, the main base and I want to craft up some of the, I think they're called shocking tranquilizer darts. They're um, the most effective ones, apparently. Um, they are a bit expensive to craft, but hopefully I've got everything I need for that. I did make a quick trip um, down to the underwater cave, uh, at least the, the first room. <laughs> uh, it was starting to get pretty dangerous in there on the Hypno frog, but uh, I managed to get a um, a bit more of this biotoxin because we do need this to craft the shocking um, tranquilizer um, darts. So basically, to make these, I I don't know if we make these in the smithy. Uh, I'm assuming we do, but uh, let's have a look here. Tranquilizer darts, and then we need. Let's have a look here. Maybe we make these in the. Um, Fabricator instead. I'm not too sure. Let's have a look here. Uh, yeah, shocking tranquilizer darts. So uh, we'll make as many of these as we possibly can. I think we need some metal in here as well. Um, just grab some of that. Shocking tranquilizer darts. So it's two metal ingots per dart and three biotoxins. Okay, I don't know how many we're going to be able to make here. It looks like 48. Um, if that's not enough, I've got some backup trank arrows as well. So we'll just get those crafting up. Um, looks like the sun's about to go down, but uh, shouldn't be too much of a drama. And then um, hopefully I've got everything else I need. Actually, I think I need to craft up another stone gateway. I put away my um, uh, taming stuff somewhere, and I can't remember. I can't remember where I put it. So uh, yeah, I know I had a bunch of stone gates, but I don't know. Maybe I used some of them in building the um, the water pen although there's only one small dino gate in that but anyway we can craft another one up uh pretty easy here let's just see what we need for that stone wood and thatch all right we should have all of that stuff wood stone thatch Can I craft this in my inventory though? This is the question. 
Doesn't look like like I can. It's been a while since I made one of these uh, gateway. I might not have enough materials here. Uh, just a regular dino gate is all we need here. Stone behemoth gateway. Hmm. That's weird. Let's join up here. Maybe it is in my inventory. <laughs> Stone. Yeah, I was in the wrong area. <laughs> okay, let's grab this back out of here. We just need one. I, I actually have the gates already, but we need the um, gateway the gateway part of it and then we should have four of those I've also got um, a couple of um, the trap things um, the large the large traps that we need um, let's see we got 48 I think that's all we could craft We'll grab the extra darts there as well. Let's just turn that off. And we might actually need some of these. Just in case. Um, alrighty. I think that's everything that we need. So uh, let's just um, make sure we've got plenty of food and drink. Um, we'll grab some of this and some of this We almost don't need the spyglass anymore because we can actually use the uh, gene scanner to do the same thing <laughs> So I don't know maybe I should put this Put this away so we got that extra hotbar slot um, Yeah, but this will tell us the um, The uh, The level sex um and also the traits so and it seems to have pretty good range so it should do the job okay now the snow is quite dangerous but hopefully we've got everything we need here i might actually take some med brews where, where are our med brews at um I'll take a few of those we won't go too crazy i don't actually use these that often but we'll, we'll have them um we'll have them ready to go uh i'm not going to put them on my hot bar because i always drink them accidentally but, um, yeah, we've got a cryopod there. Maybe we'll grab another one of those. Should have some spares here. I've also been um, just um, breeding up the stegos here. So I was able to get um, a female 207, the same level as uh, Simon here hopefully it's got enough food but um, yeah now um, I guess if I wanted to uh, I don't really have a specific use for these guys but they are very cool um, oh they're still mating <laughs> okay maybe we'll turn that off we don't want too many eggs happening but um, yeah uh, I don't have a specific use for these at the moment um, they are very cool though so now that we have a pair we can pretty much breed those as well which is awesome so we've got some spare eggs there but um anyway okay it's it's night time now that's not super ideal but um we might head off anyway and see what we can find in the snow area we might be able to i mean it's probably gonna let's be honest it's probably gonna take quite a long time to actually find a um oh it's empty okay <laughs> Probably going to take quite a long time to find a high level UT, uh, UT Rhinos, but, um, you know, we'll give it a shot. Pretty dark in here. <laughs> let's, uh, let's head on out. I'll put on my snow gear now. I was getting a little bit hot before, but, um, yeah, hopefully I'm not forgetting anything. 
but we'll have a bit of a cruise around and see what we can find over in the snow area maybe we'll pick up some drops as well sometimes there's some pretty high level drops out there um i guess mainly the purple gold and red red drops are the ones to go for oh, although blue can be quite good sometimes it's kind of the luck of the draw but um i'm really interested in getting some ascended level uh blueprints basically for different things um particularly the saddles that i'm going to be needing i'd like to get a pretty good meg saddle um yeah anyway <laughs> Let's go see what we can find over here in the snow area. Um, UTs aren't the most common creature in the world, but we'll see. Let's see if we can find a few. They're usually fairly easy to spot because they're always like fighting and using their roar, and uh, and they have those carnos with them sometimes as well. Just cruise up this way, I guess. Actually, seems pretty quiet up here at the moment. I'm not seeing too much of anything. Usually, there's tons of wolves. Well, there's something down there. I don't know what that was. I'd like to get another Deodon as well. Um, they are pretty awesome. It's just hard to keep them alive with the amount of food. I guess I could cryo it until I had a, you know, need to use it. It's a healing ability or something like that. Yeah, that'd probably be the way to go. Just cryo it up. Um, oh, what is that? That's a quits. Quetzal, Quetzal. Level 60. Angry. <laughs> they look so cool. I definitely want to try and team one of these at some point. Let's go check this purple drop real quick. There's that other ice cave behind me. I haven't gone into that one yet. We should definitely check that out um, at some point. We've got a Megatherium saddle, uh, a few ammos, grab that, grab that, get rid of that, um, pretty cool, we got another long neck rifle, Megatherium, I think they're those um, long neck looking things, I'm not 100% sure on that. Freya curry, that's pretty cool. Alright, back to the mission. <laughs> I'm totally going to get distracted a bunch of times probably doing this. there's a, an explorer note here usually there is when there's ruins like this there we go 
unbelievable. The artifact perfectly fits one of the slots in the platform's pedestal. How did I not notice that right away? I really am a dipstick. So if this key, such as it is, was acquired by activating one of the obelisks, then it follows that the other two keys can be obtained by activating the other two obelisks. Then, with all three keys, maybe this platform will lead to whatever is controlling the island's ecosystem. If the other obelisks work the way that the first one did, that means I have to find a whole mess of artifacts first. And I don't think I can do that alone. Hmm. All right, well, uh, so far we haven't seen a single Uteranus, and I've covered a large area of the snow biome, but we'll keep going. Well, guys, I have not been able to find a uh, single Uteranus yet, but what I have found is a max level Daedon down here. That somehow survived the fight with uh, a mammoth. So we might actually try to tame this. Um, let's see. How many trank darts have I got on me? Mm, yeah, probably enough. I don't know how injured it is though. Um, let's swap to the trank darts here. I can't remember how many... Well, actually, I think the first day it on I tamed, uh, it was a baby that I raised. So, I'm not uh, not sure how many um, arrows it would take to tame one of these things. But it looks like it's uh, just going to sit there for me, which is good. Because I was considering putting down a trap for this one. Might still need a trap to keep it safe. I wonder if I can build around it here. Probably not. So, yeah, I guess if I can tame this up, you know what I actually forgot is I forgot to bring any, uh, any kibble, but I guess we can, um, come back for it. What's that wolf doing? The wolf just ran off, that's weird. <laughs> I don't want to get in any fights. It might be Torpor running. There we go. Oh, that wasn't too bad at all. Now we just have to keep it safe. Um, let's do this. Get the doors up. Hopefully nothing's going to be able to uh, damage it now so let's take a look here pretty uh, pretty good but we are gonna have to come back um, I can't remember if these guys need um, any tra any like uh, um, what what do you call that stuff uh, narcotics or not but we might actually give it some narcotics to be on the safe side because it looks like the tor torpor is dropping a little bit here so yeah we'll feed you some of these and uh, we'll go back to base and get some kibble because <laughs> the uh, one of the most important things uh, hopefully we can find this area Okay, we're on our way back guys, and uh, I got myself some kibble. Looks like the Zaydon is nearly uh, woken up, which is not great. Um, do I have any tranquilizers? I've got stimulant, that's the opposite of what I want. Uh, we're gonna have to be quick here. Um, hopefully there's nothing hostile around here. Sounds like there might be. Oh well. Please eat that and eat it fast. <laughs> it's nearly it's nearly woken up. Can I get some um can I get some berries here? 
Uh oh. Uh, I'll just ignore those. Oh my god! There's a UT? What? What level are you? I'm gonna get killed. I'm not careful. Uh, that's a Kano. Where did it go? You are level 20, dang it! I think um, my Dayanon's waking up as well. Fortunate. Oh, please don't tell me you're uh hey hey stop that oh no I've been feared I've been feared um oh this is bad this is bad it's got a darkness effect as well Wait, did it tame up? I hope they can't attack it through the gates. Oh, it looks like it tamed up. I wasn't sure if it woke up or if it tamed up. <laughs> where, where did that UT go? Obviously, I want a higher level than that, but it might be worth checking out its, um, its stats. Man, that's crazy. You know, I spent like two full in-game days looking for UDs, and I did not see a single one. And then when I come back to, uh, team up that, uh, what is that, warm? Okay, I don't think that's a useful one. When I come back to team up, team up the day, don't we see a UD? What are the odds of that? That's that's craziness. Warm. What is warm? Okay, that's not the greatest. All right, we're gonna try to cryo up our Deodon here. Let's just set you to passive. Grab that back out of there. I really need to give you some food, but you know what? We'll just um, cry you up. 224, that's... Oh no, this is not good. Oh, this is not good. boy die oh. get him Alice I was gonna die for a second there, but that's okay. They were fortunately they were focused on fighting Alice. Um. <laughs> Alrighty, uh, let's see. We got a bunch of berries here. I might as well take these for my um, animal troughs back home. Oh boy, that was crazy. Let's just pick these up. When it rains, it it pours. That's what they say, right? <laughs> when it rains, it pours. Oh, man. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty cool that we got a, a 150, um, where is it? A 150 day at dawn. Um, I think its stats look pretty good. It's hard for me to tell. 
But yeah, I think I'm going to keep her cryoed up until I need her to heal up dinos for me. Um, and then I'll need a ton of meat to, um, to feed her so she can, um, sustain the healing business. You know what, guys? Uh, well, I've got a lot of junk in my inventory at the moment. But uh, anyway, what I was going to say is uh, I think we'll leave this episode here for today, actually. It is uh, probably running a little bit long, but in the next episode, I do want to just continue straight on with the search for a Uteranus that we can actually uh, tame that's not super low level, like that one that ambushed me back there. But anyway, that's where we'll leave this one for today. I hope you're enjoying this series, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.